Okay, so last time at the end of class, we touched on this idea that there were these so-called polyprotic acids and bases. We're going to pick up with this concept today, okay? Um, the first three videos we're going to deal with or watch are going to teach you how to deal with the fully protonated form. Then I'm going to show you a video how to deal with the intermediate form. And then finally, the fully deprotonated form. So um, in the case of like H2A, which would be a diprotic acid, the fully protonated would be H2A form. The intermediate would be HA minus one. And the fully deprotonated is when all the protons are stripped off. So we abbreviate that A2 minus. Um, now we're gonna use some real chemicals here to, to show you what I mean by this, okay? Um, and, and a really uh, good example, I guess, of um, uh, diprotic acid you use would be carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. Bicarbonate ion, HCO3 minus one, singly deprotonated, that's our intermediate. And the fully deprotonated ion would be carbonate, CO3 two minus, okay? Now, when we treat these polyprotic acids and bases, we assume that the acids and bases uh, either donate or accept protons sequentially. All right, now not all protons in these structures then are equal. Um, there's a first one that's donated easier and the second one is always more difficult to donate, okay? Um, now to ex uh, express this quantitatively, um, we need to decide uh, what terms to use. Now, for the donation of the first proton, we're gonna use Ka1. Just given a number. Ka1 is always the largest Ka because donation of the first proton proceeds to the greatest extent. Now, the second proton can also be donated in some circumstances. And to describe its donation, we're, we're going to talk about Ka2. Now, that one's always smaller than Ka1, meaning that it's more difficult to get the second proton. Um, donated. Now, if there's a third proton, there'd be a Ka3. If there's a fourth proton, there'd be a Ka4. You get the idea. We're going to treat these sequentially, one at a time, and for each proton, assign a K value, which describes its tendency to be donated from the acid form to form the conjugate base, okay? So this is the idea. Now, the purpose of this video is to deal with the first form, and then the next two videos will be the subsequent forms, okay? The form I'm going to deal with here is the fully protonated form. And using our example, H2CO3, that would be like if you throw some of this carbonic acid in water. Now, we know it's an acid. It's in its fully protonated form, so it might set up an equilibrium with water in which the first proton and only that first proton is donated. Now, as a consequence, I'm going to make some bicarbonate and H plus, okay? Now, in your textbook or in a data table, I can look up the Ka's for carbonic acid. And, and when I do that, Ka1 is 4.46 times 10 to the minus seventh. That's the value that's in your data table. Now, Ka2, which is for the donation of the second proton, is 4.69 times 10 to the minus 11th. Now, what is the reaction? for Ka2, just if we were to look at that, just to make sure we're being clear, it would be HCO3, the bicarbonate ion, donating a proton, a second proton, and forming its conjugate base, which is the carbonate ion. So we have the first reaction, second reaction, sequential donation of protons. Chemically, this is what we mean by it, okay? Now, if we want to figure out what the pH of a solution of carbonic acid is, how in the world we can do it. So let's consider a beaker. And I'm gonna make a 0.1 mole per liter solution of H2CO3. H2CO3, that's my carbonic acid, my fully protonated form. Now how in the world can I figure out what the pH of that solution is? The first step is realizing it's the fully protonated form. So we're gonna follow the approach for fully protonated cases, which I'm gonna outline here in a few minutes. 
Now, because carbonic acid is a weak acid, I still need to treat it like an equilibrium. Let's write our race table. That's how we do equilibria, right? We know that by now. So my formal concentration is 0.1 moles per liter. I have zero and zero. I'm gonna make some plus X and X because it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. I'm gonna use X of S and I'm gonna have 0.1 minus X, X and X. Very familiar to us by this point. Now, since the reaction above describes the donation of the first and only the first proton, I'm gonna use Ka1 which has a value of 4.46 times 10 to the minus seventh to describe this equilibrium. And I know that equilibrium constants are product server reactants, so I can substitute X and X for my expected equilibrium concentrations of my ions and 0.1 minus X for the expected equilibrium concentration of my H2CO3, the unionized acid, All right? Easy enough. So when I do some math, it looks like I'm gonna end up with X squared. Probably do an assumption here in the denominator that X is small compared to the 0.1. This really simplifies my life because then I just do 4.1 times 4.46 times 10 to the minus seventh. And that's of course gonna yield 4.46 times 10 to the minus eighth. So if I take the square root of that, I should get my X. Let me see what I get for X when I do that, okay? Uh, get my calculator out here. So equals the square root of 4.46 e to the minus 8. All right, so I just did that and I get 0 0.0002119 for my x. Now, what does x represent? Well, looking back to the problem, it looks to me that X represents the concentration of H plus, and it also represents the concentration of bicarbonate, doesn't it? That we expect that equilibrium in this beaker. All right. So for a monoprotic acid case, we would stop here. And we would say, hey, look, it's H plus. I made H plus, take the negative log of my concentration. That's my pH, okay? And we, that we'd, we'd fully be justified in doing that. And that would be the correct way to proceed. Now, the thing is for these poly products, if you're perceptive, right? You may take a look at this compound over here. And say, hey, wait, Dr. Thompson, that bicarbonate ion, well, that just might act as an acid. It's got a proton, can it, can it donate? that extra H right, right there, a second donation. And in fact, we know it can because look, Ka2, 4.69 to 10 to the last length. We, we got a number for that, okay? So that protic acid had two protons, right? So maybe we should go on. And, and maybe we should consider bicarbonate setting up an equilibrium to donate the second proton and make the carbonate anion. And, and since it's an equilibrium, I mean, maybe I should do a rice table, put in my uh, initial amounts of everything in mole per liter, because I always work my rice tables and molarities or moles per liter. And, and maybe I can you know, make, a, make a go at this, okay? Well, let's take a look at what our initial numbers should be. Now, we're going to have to kind of feed the initial concentration or the final concentrations from the previous problem into the initial concentrations here. So let's take a look over here. Um, what was our X? 0. 0. 0.0002, okay? And that corresponded to the concentration of both H plus and my bicarbonate, all right? So I need to take that number and write it here. So it's what, three zeros, Two, one, 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 nine, three zeros, two, one, 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 nine. Those are our initial concentrations of those. Now, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I put the wrong, put in the wrong place. It doesn't belong here. It belongs over here for our bicarbonate, point zero, 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 two, one, 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 nine. So it's our initial concentration of bicarbonate that we produced in the first association. 
NH plus that was produced in the first association. Now the uh, initial concentration of this one, as far as we can tell, is, is zero, right? We haven't made any yet. But we're gonna make some, so let's make X. We'll make X of this at equilibrium. I'm gonna have X of this. I'm gonna use X of this in the process. My final equilibrium concentration will be 0 0.00021119 minus X. My equilibrium concentration of this one will be 0 0.00021119 plus X. And my initial concentration, of, or my final concentration in equilibrium will be X of that, okay? Now this reaction describes our second Ka, Ka2, but it's still products of reactants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take X and I'm gonna multiply it by 0 0.00021119 plus X up in the numerator, that's our products, right? And then down the denominator was our initial bicarbonate that we had minus how much we use. And this all has to equal our Ka. Now, what Ka do we use here? We have to use Ka2, don't we? Because this is the second proton donation event. Now, Ka2, if you look at the data table for this acid, carbonic acid, it's 4.69 times 10 to the minus 11. Now, remember that that value of Ka changes depending on what acid you're talking about, okay? It's acid specific because not all acids have the same strength. And from here, we just have to solve for X. Now, again, I'm always looking for uh, help when I can. And I notice my Ka2 is extremely small. It's about a million times, over a million times smaller uh, than my uh, number right here. So again, I'm pretty confident the assumption is gonna work because K is so small. I'm gonna ditch my X there. I'm also gonna ditch my X up here and say both of those X's are small. And if I do that, well, gosh, looks like that cancels out. And then X should be equal to my K2. It's pretty convenient, that uh, approximation there. And sure enough, when we solve for X, we see it's very, very small compared to that number. Our assumption, our assumption works because that X is clearly, by inspection, way less than 5%, okay, of that number, this one. Yep. Or just 5% rule check, right? Okay, so now we've made some headway here. So if I was to ask you, what is the total H plus in solution considering this system of study? And you'd say, okay, well, we worked this problem to equilibrium and we got two sources of H plus, didn't we? We got some H plus from step one, the first Ka, we got some more from step two. So if I was doing this rationally, I might say, hey, just add them together, right? That makes sense, just add them together. How much H plus did we get from the first dissociation? How much did we get from the second? Well, let's look. This is back at our first calculation. We said the amount of H plus we got was this, 0.0002111, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I'm gonna write that in for my first number on my set of slides. So, 0 0.0002119. That was the molarity from the first step. Now, how much bore H plus did we get for the second step? Well, we did a math and look. It's like that's the amount that we got from the second step. X represents the change for the second step. And indeed, this quantity represents what? The total H plus. That's what we're doing just down here at the bottom. So the change was 4.69 times 10, 10 to the minus 11th. Now, oddly enough, when we did this, the mathematics in the ice table for the second calculation, you know, we made this assumption that X was small. Uh, we're just kind of programmed to do this at this point, right? We've seen it before. We know that sometimes you can make the assumption. That's, it makes our life easier, right? We assumed X was small and we ignored it, didn't we? We ignored it, right? Let me show you a highlight where, where we ignored it. It'll be kind of funny once we look at it. Okay, oops. Okay, and let me go back to red. So there's another zero, oops, I gotta get my pen now. There's another zero here, okay. So where did we ignore it at? Right here in this term, there should be a plus X in there. Okay, that's where we ignored it, because this comes down, right? So when we ignored it, we said X was tiny compared to this other number, didn't we? Mathematically, I mean, that's what we justified. But we didn't think about it chemically at that time, did we? 
I thought about it chemically when we came back and we added these two numbers together. And I was saying, oh, we get some H plus from step one, some from step two. Let's just add them together, right? I mean, that's what we that's what we talked about down here at the bottom. That was very logical chemically. So my point here is, is the step two, the second dissociation, the one that we consider on, on this slide, where the bicarbonate gave us a little bit more H plus. Was that really relevant? I would argue it's not, is it? It's not particularly relevant. But the amount of H plus that we got from the second step is like a million times smaller than the first step. So let's wrap our minds around this for a second. Maybe we can understand why this is and if this will kind of be a general rule. Well, the first thing I want to communicate is that in fact, this not relevance of the second step is actually a kind of a general rule that we're going to use for our class. Uh, this is relevant for carbonic acid, but really any diprotic acid or, 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 or triprotic acid. Uh, only the first proton donation event usually is what's relevant for the chemistry and setting the pH. Um, the subsequent donation events, the second, the third, the fourth proton, uh, are really not very relevant for setting the pH when you're starting with the fully, or fully protonated form like we were here at the H2CO3 form. Now, why in the world is that? Why is it that these subsequent steps, second, third proton donation steps are just not relevant, okay? There's really a couple of reasons, so really two. And we saw it mathematically that we get a million times smaller H plus, but why? Two reasons I'm gonna give you. Reason number one. Ka2, Ka3, etc. Subsequent Ka's after Ka1 are always much smaller than Ka1. Like, like usually, like at least a thousand times, ten thousand times smaller. So what that says is, if Ka2, Ka3 is smaller it becomes increasingly difficult to, to get that proton to be donated. That, that second, third proton is just not donated to a large extent, but the first one is donated much more. So it makes sense that the total H plus we get is from the first step is, is much higher compared to the subsequent steps. And the second reason why we get a tiny amount of H plus from the second, third steps is look at this number right here and also this number right here concentration of the acid that's donating is going to be much smaller, isn't it? That's this one right here. HCO3, our bicarbonate, that's acting as our acid here. It's donating the proton. Whatever that is, it's that concentration is always going to be much smaller than what you started with in the fully protonated form because we're always dealing with weak acids here, even in the fully protonated form, the H2CO3. So we'll start off with 0.1 mole per liter H2CO3, but only a tiny fraction of those molecules even donated. So this number is gonna necessarily be a lot smaller than the original fully protonated acid. Also, a common ion is present, H plus. Look, we made some H plus, didn't we? From the first donation. And the presence of that H plus, remember the common ion effect, it suppresses further ionization. So for these two reasons, our second, our third dissociation for setting the pH is, is really not so important. And in fact, the second and third dissociation, we don't even need to consider it. We're just gonna say it's not relevant, okay? But our first dissociation is certainly relevant. We started with the 0.1 mole per liter HCO3. We found that H plus generated was about 0.2, oops, what happened? It was about 0.2 millimolar. Let me see if I can undo this. Uh, where's the undo button? There it is. Okay. The concentration generated was about 0.0002 molar of H plus. We still want to know what the pH is. 
Now we know by definition that the pH is the negative log of the H plus. And to a first approximation, if, if this number represents the total H plus, why, why don't we just compute the pH using it? And to make a long story short, that is what we are gonna do for our purposes in our class, okay? We're gonna assume that the first association from polyprotic acid, and this is that fully protonated form, okay? It's important to identify that, but as protonated as it can be, okay? The fully acidic form, only the first dissociation event matters. And we showed that with the calculation here. So if I wanna compute an estimate of the pH of the solution, I just need to take the negative log of that number. I did that on my calculator here real fast. It looks like I get 3.67. And that should be a good estimation of the pH of a solution of carbonic acid when you make it 0.1 mole per liter on the fully protonated form. Okay, now the subsequent videos are gonna teach you how to handle the intermediate form. It's gonna be like bicarbonate. So what you can do is you can make a sodium salt in which one of the H pluses is replaced with an Na plus. It's still a one plus one cation, right? So when you put that in water, the Na separates from the bicarbonate. And then this substance is an intermediate. The reason why I call it intermediate is it can actually act as an acid or a base. So which one will it do? Well, you're gonna to have to watch the second video and I guess to find out. But it turns out uh, it's not very strong of either an acid or a base. It kind of uh, stays similar to, to this, okay? This form. And then the fully deprotonated form will be the third video. And this would be like where you could get Na2CO3. Now that's a salt, you can buy it from a chemical supply house, sodium carbonate. Here, both of our H pluses have been replaced with Na's. No H pluses present in this, is there? But if you put that into water, the sodiums will dissociate. And guess what? Carbonate ion will form. Can't the carbonate ion act as a base and accept from water to make bicarbonate and maybe some hydroxide? So the fully de deprotonated can only act as a base. But the intermediate can act as either. Okay, so the subsequent videos are going to teach you how to handle these. I want you to watch them because when we talk about titrations here in a little bit, all this is going to come back and it's going to mesh together in one coherent message, all right? All right, see that next video and don't forget your in-class quiz for the day. Hope you're doing well.